Hey what's up guys, it's Apollo Uchiha here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm back with a new story, the name of this story is What if Naruto refused to be a ninja and yeah guys, it is an unscripted story, no shout out to you where it is due, shout out to my boy Jabron Gaming, I guess that was what his name was, anyways, shout out to you my guy for suggesting this idea, anyways moving onwards, there is a thing that I would like to tell you, yeah, the reason for not uploading yesterday is because I recorded a whole long ass movie one hour and 10 minutes without any cut or break in between and yeah i was quite happy but instead of saving it i accidentally ended up closing the whole tab and the whole progress was lost and it was in the middle of the night like midnight at least up to like what 1 a.m and i was pissed i was like what the hell and yeah so i decided to take a day off and you know mop around because that was one heck of a story and yeah, I'm gonna try to recreate it, but I'm thinking of experimenting this time, like, you know, taking your ideas and putting it up in ChatGPT to see what kind of outlines of the story does he write. I mean, I have been trying it out since my brother bought it for, you know, his studies. The thing is that, well, it doesn't write any, you know, complete fictions. It does write some, but not complete in detail. But it does give you an overview of how the story can go. You can switch it up a notch as well. And that adds a lot more elements to that. Anyways, do let me know what you guys think in the comments and make sure you leave a like and subscribe to my channel as well. And yes, my PC is currently on a service. So yeah, I'm recording on my old setup. So don't mind at all and enjoy today's story. Anyways, without any further ado, let's begin with our today's story. And no rolling the intro today, by the way. Our story begins in Konoha Gakure Nasato. As we go towards the said village, it was October 10th and night time. It was supposed to be a peaceful evening like any other evening, but everything went down the drain when the Kyubi no Yoko, the strongest biju in the whole existence of the elemental nations, arrived at the doorsteps of the said village. The shinobis, feeling the pressure and chakra that was malicious in the air, were quick to react, evacuating the civilians and the Jonins and Anbus, and even the clan shinobis, who were virgins, arrived at the front lines. Under the guidance of the third Hokage, Hiruzen Sarutobi, who has retired and was enjoying his retirement. What the hell? I thought everything was going smoothly. Hokage-sama, well, what are we going to do? Where is even Minato-sama? As the shinobis were now wavering in their fort and were even thinking of evacuating. But Hiruzen knew he had to boost up the morale. People, stand in your place. We have to defend our home. If not us, then who will? We have defeated major enemies and have become victorious. And today, we will become victorious as well. Just believe in your Kage. He will arrive here soon. As do I believe in him. As everyone cheered up, as Hiruzen rallied his people to battle against the Biju, already fighting a losing battle. And as the battle continued, it became evident that whatever they tried was futile. As when everything seemed lost, a huge toad appeared into the battle with a katana in his hand as the battle submerged and took changes in tides. As the said huge toad then said, Why don't you pick someone of your own size, huh? Oi, Gaki, I'm gonna hold this fox off while you and your girl try your best. We're trying. Come on, Bunta. Thank you. No worries, kid. Thank me later once I'm done or else. Well, able to survive, that is. As the battle continued between the two colossals, we see Hiruzen making his way while everyone was watching it in awe towards the couple. What the hell is wrong, Minato? What went wrong? Everything went wrong. A masked person appeared. Someone leaked our information and our location as well. What? What happened to the others? I'm sorry, Hiruzen sama. Ibaku sama and the others, they. they were killed. As Hiruzen took it as a, quite a shock. But he knew now was not the time. Regaining his composure, he said, oh, Okay, what are you going to do? We are going to use our kids to seal the Biju into three parts. The soul, the yin, and the yang chakra. Seeing this, Ruzan began to contemplate. What is it? Don't seal the soul within the child. What? But why? Because the people. I can tell. I have ruled over them. Minato. I know they will take out their hatred. I mean, look around you. People have lost their homes, their loved ones. People will take their anger out on him. Don't do this to him. 
as both Minato and Kushina looked at each other. And for the first time, Minato listened to both his predecessor and his wife. Please, Minato. Alright, fine. But someone has to take in the soul. I will, said Kushina. As that is it w when it was decided, Kushina drew the seal instead of Naruto on her and on her two children as Minato began to do the hand seals. Eight pentagrams drawn on the three of them as golden chains erupted from the three seals, sealing the biju and splitting in three parts and sealing it away forever. As after that we see, there was a deafening silence until the huge colossal that remained there turned towards them. Phew, now that's taken care of Gaki, I'm gonna go back. Ah. <sighs> The fox left a huge markings and scars. Thanks, Kamabunta. I'll make it up to you. Oh, you know, I know you will. I know. Anyways, I guess I'll be off for the night. You need me? Just call me. You know how to. With that, the huge door left. As the, the, as the shinobis that were there began to erupt in cheers, saying that their Kage once again saved them, like he did in the Third Great Shinobi War. As this was going on, we see... Kushina celebrating alongside her husband as she picked up a child each and handed Naruto to Hiruzen for the time being. Now Hiruzen, he was in a grief of his own. He lost the love of his life, his wife of many years. But as he was, well, in his sorrows all by himself, Naruto grabbed his finger while his eyes were still closed as if he was comforting him, which Hiruzen smiled at. Huh, little one, I guess... You saw and heard my grief, huh? Well, I guess it is true. Little kids really are angels, huh? After all. As after that we see, they arrived at the council chambers where the council meeting was about to begin and held. As we see now, as soon as they arrived inside the council chambers, there was a moment of silence as everyone was seated in their positions. Until, Danza stood up and said, First of all, Minato, I would like to congratulate you for your victory against the Biju and for the expansion of your family. As everyone congratulated Minato as Minato then shy as he was, thanked everyone for their congratulations. Now moving onwards, uh, serious matter Minato, I know this might be the happiest day for you but we have lost a lot of people, I know about that. Well the thing is that what are we gonna do, when is the funeral going to be held? The people need to hear their Kage's comforting words. I will address my people after this meeting. And not only that, I will, no, we will all have a huge mourn for the people that have fallen today. The Shinobis, Konovichis, the civilians, all of those who have fallen. As there was a moment of silence, and after that we see Mibuki stood up from the civilian side. Um, Minato, Kushina, what is it Mibuki-san? Well, uh, the thing is that I want to know about one thing. Knowing that Kushina was the previous Shinchuriki and all, and you already revealed to us that Kushina, you know, once going into labor, there might be a chance of Biju breaking free. We want to know how that happened. Well, as dramatic as it may sound, it was because of an Uchiha, but not from the Uchiha clan. We believe it is a person who has stolen the eyes of a fallen Uchiha or he is worse than that. Worse? What could be that? Said Hiruzen. That would be being, well, Fugaku. That is Madara Uchiha himself. As every eyes from the past that has been the past of the village were widened. What? Th that cannot be. S Sensei himself took care of him. Right? Said Hiruzen, looking towards his comrades. Even Danzu and the others were shocked. That cannot be simply possible, Minato. It has been more than hundreds of years since since the passing of Madara at the Valley of the End. That that may be true, but that person, he had the eyes of an Uchiha, but the way he talked and I believe the power he possessed, it was second to none. If I might say so myself, it was as if I was facing Madara himself. That... That is a remaining mystery. So what are we gonna do about that, Fugaku-sama? What are you gonna do about the rogue Uchiha? Because my son just died. Listen, it's not Fugaku's fault or either the clan's fault, said Minato as he stood up. They're not aware of that. For all we know that there might be a person who has a grudge against Uchiha's or even Konoha. 
is trying to impersonate them so that they could you know do the exact same that you are doing right now taking the uchihas out of the way and making them look bad in the villi's eyes so that there will be a distrust and maybe even civil war as the civilians sat down now realizing the deeper plot here i i, I am sorry fogaku sama it's all right but please do not speculate anything on your own yes fogaku sama i i will be careful thank you after that we see minato went on and forward with the continuation of the damages and repair until danzo asked a question then i might dare ask minato one more question what is it danzo san who are the current jinchuriki of the biju i mean which of your children are well menma and mito my eldest the oldest they are the well jinchurikis of yin and yang so the soul is no i possess the soul naruto doesn't possess anything it was ruzen sama's idea and also for us a surety that well the soul doesn't try to corrupt an infant child because my mind is already developed and i can handle him because i already lived with him for a part of my life and that is when the council was sold knowing fully well the biju will never see the day light ever again and even regarded manma and mito as heroes and saviors of konoha alongside with kushina and minato now comes the time where time begins to pass by as the children steadily begin to grow up at the age of 3 we see the three kids playing all together while manma and mito had wooden kunais and shurikens in their hands naruto had a crayon and a piece of paper he was fond of painting and he had different ideologies from shinobis as well and that is when we see kushin and minato enjoying the solace of their family on a holiday was met with jiraiya who arrived at their doorstep after letting his sensei in we see a conversation was held right beside the kid <sighs> got it man minato you have quite some cute gakis over here <laughs> thanks sensei but i guess i can't take the credit for my all i mean kushina is their mother and you know yeah i know he said wiggling his eyebrows and earning a frying pan from kushina and after a swollen face and Jiraiya's antics we see Jiraiya getting serious. Now listen up Minato. Kushina. Remember the prophecy that I told you about Minato? Oh yeah. One being born from the yellow flash and red death of Konoha. And you know, bringing peace to this world with a power that never was expected to bring peace. Yeah, we do remember that, said Kushina. As Jiraiya nodded. Well, I think that power might be the Kyuubi's power. Really? Yes. I mean, think about it. Kyuubi is a being that is obsessed with destruction, and that power that Menma and Mito possess might be a way to bring peace into this world, using it for good instead of, you know, destruction and all that. That is quite a nice well, de- deciphering of this prophecy, Sensei. <laughs> I'm not going to take the whole credit, but yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. So what do you suggest? I suggest that you train them. And what about Naruto? Well, it depends on Naruto if he wants to be a shinobi or not. I mean, he has to choose. He's not going to be the clan heir. I mean, he, because both of the oldest are obviously going to be, but he's still a part of clan. I mean, it is Naruto's right to choose. And when they are at the age, we will ask them all together. And if it bothers you that much, Sensei, said Minato, we might add on a little bit of training to Menma and Mito beforehand. As Kushina agreed to that instantly, as Jiraiya did as well. Well, I got no other opinions on that matter. Everything is agreed upon here. Then, do the do me a favor, Gaki, and watch over them. And when they're of the age where I can deal with them, I'll come in and swoop them up and train them properly. Yeah, I guess I'll just do that. As after that, Jiraiya went away, and life began to move on as usual. Now we see Naruto and his siblings reach at the age of 5 as they were playing together we see Manma and Mito who were playing right beside their sibling with wooden shurikens and kunais stopped as they looked at their brother's painting wow that's that's awesome Naruto that that is so cool said Mito as she held it up and that is when the parents walked in wow Mito did you drew this no it was Naruto said Mito with a chirp in her voice as Naruto looked quite well 
shy and blushed even. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not much. I mean, I, I was busy and all that. As Kushina then suddenly gasped, Minato, this place, we've been there. Isn't that right, Naruto? It's the park that we went last, you know, last Sunday. As both Minato and Kushina were shocked, their son might be a prodigy in this field. As we see, the three of the kids were sat down by their parents because today was the day where they were going to tell them about the whole truth and that is the day they were going to decide about their future. After telling them the truth, which was hard with pill to swallow by both Menma and Mito and Naruto, we see they moved on to the second part. Obviously, Menma and Mito, feeling the urge to fulfill their parents' legacy, agreed instantly. And as for Naruto, after hearing about the shinobi's ways, he somewhat was distant to them. He even told them that he didn't like the shinobi ways and wanted to do his own thing. He was still searching though. And in due time, he might be able to find out about that. Even after that, they told him to go to the Shinobi Academy with his siblings. And after the graduation, if he wants to, he can become a Shinobi or he can do whatever he wants. And that is the condition Naruto agreed upon. As now we see, the training began for all of them. They had to teach Naruto at least self-defense, obviously. So the training began for the three siblings, albeit Naruto not liking it one bit. As the years begin to pass again, Naruto and his friends, uh, his siblings made many friends, such as the clan head's children, and two of the girls in particular were Naruto's best friends, being Tenten and Sakura, who had an obsessive massive crush over his other friend named Sasuke. And Naruto obviously, alongside with Tenten, teased her and even tried to set up a date with Sasuke, but Sasuke was just too hellbent on training and surpassing Benma and me too. Eventually, there was another guy that Naruto met, one year older than them. His name was Rock Lee and turns out he was interested in Sakura. And after that, when both Tenten and Naruto convinced her, she agreed to, well, you know, go out with him. And the ship was sailed then and there. And as for Tenten and Naruto, both of them enjoyed each other's company because Tenten loved to make weapons, albeit also using them. She saw it as a form of art and Naruto loved art because he loved to draw images and paintings. So yeah, they had a, some sort of connection. And that connection ended when one year before Naruto's graduation, Tenten had to graduate alongside with Rock Lee. And turns out both of them were in the same team. And Naruto and Sakura were left all by themselves to fend off. As now we see, a year went by like hell for both of them. Because... The girl was away from her boyfriend and as for Naruto, he was away from the only, only girl that ever understood his passion, aside from, well, his family. As now we see, a week before the graduation, Naruto was again bored as he sighed for the tenth time on the dinner table. As unbeknownst to him, his whole family was looking at him, exchanging glances, until Manmother said, <clears throat> Naruto? Uh, yes? What is it, Nissan? What is wrong with you? Is everything fine? Is someone bothering you? Is that it? No, everything is fine. What made you think that? You've been out of it, Naruto, said Mito. For quite a while, we have been noticing that. Oh, it's nothing much. It's just the academy is getting boring, and I don't think that I want to be a shinobi at all. Really? Said Menma and Mito. After all... That, I mean, you made a lot of friends, Naruto. Seriously? You don't want to be with us? Is that it? No, no, uh, it, it's not that. It's just that I don't like the way of shinobis. I mean, killing and all that. Naruto, you know that in our world, we are always in danger. And our life ex expectancy is up to 25 at best. But yet you are here, Tojan, by luck somehow. Who knows what might happen tomorrow? As Kushina and everyone else agreed, as even the kids were now in deep thought, as that is when Naruto said, and that is why I want to live my life to the fullest, because if anything is going to happen tomorrow, I will know that even if I died, I died on my own terms though, John, said Naruto, as he then suddenly got up, leaving his food there, causing his family to go into quite a shock and serious state, thinking that they might have made Naruto upset, as Naruto didn't come out of his room the whole night, but when the next morning came, his mother knocked on the door, 
as surprising the door was open to see that Naruto was inside. His room was filled with his paintings that he has drawn. And in the center heart was the first painting that both Minato and Kushina had seen. It was the first painting about the picnic place they went on. As now we see Kushina sat down on Naruto's bed. As she picked up Naruto to see that his eyes were red and hugged him close. You know Naruto-kun, we won't mind at all if you want to be a person who you want to be. We were just assuring that y you're not, you know. Well, hurrying things and, you know, you might end up choosing the wrong career or path. But if you feel like this is your own way to live in this world, then be it, son. Family comes first, above all. Always remember that, right? Yes, I know. That is why, that is why I was sad that I couldn't live up to the name that you two have left. I mean, I am trying to be like Menma Nissan and Mito Nejan, but I, I'm just not them. I'm just not you. I'm me," said Naruto in a sad tone, as if he was embarrassed by himself. Well, Naruto, to be honest, you're you and we're we, but you being you is the thing that makes you great, and we love about that to you. If that makes sense," said Kushina, as both of them begin to chuckle. <laughs> that was silly. I know, right? As that is when we see a stifle of laughter for her from the other side, as Minato and both of her other children came in, earning a blush from Kushina, which was, who was embarrassed. You know, y you don't have to do that. I was having a serious moment here. Well, talking about talking things through with him, that was quite funny, Kushina. As Kushina was about to enter her ten tail state, as Minato calmed her down, <laughs> you, you don't have to worry about that. It was cute though. As that is when Minato got serious. You don't have to worry about anything, son. Whatever it is you want, we will always support you, son. As after that, a family hug was made and Naruto and his siblings graduated the next month. I mean, next week. And after the graduation, Manma and Mito went on to become the Shinobi and Konomichi that they wanted to become and started their careers as such with Ganon rank. And as for Naruto, he was set up a shop right next to the Ichiraku, where he began to sell some of his paintings and creations. At first, people and merchants from minor villages were the ones who were coming in for trade, sought them out, and even took them just to see how the response was. And let's just say that was the beginning of an era, of era of the painting wars between the different daimyos of nations as well as rich people and even the kages of different nations. Because what Naruto made was quite fascinating. As the years progressed, we see that Naruto and his village went through a lot, like a lot. Within a few months, there was an attack on Konoha, which was prevented, and thankfully nothing much was well damaged and all that. But after that, we see Naruto got the first job commissioned to him. It was from none other than Kumo, who wanted him to travel there and see the village for themselves and draw an image of it that would be displayed in the council chamber of Kumo. And let's just say, after a heated discussion with the Hokage, whose, well, Kumo ambassador, which was Killer B at the time, found out that it was the son who was the painter of the said Kage, was the one they were about to commission, understood why the heated discussion was going on. Because Kumo had one was at the odds with the mother of the said child. So in the end, Naruto, the peaceful man he was, or kid he was, went with them. As soon as he arrived, he saw the beautiful village, the different culture, all that, taking the diversity of the people in. And soon he drew a picture, a picture in the walls, not on a painting, on the walls of the council chambers of Kumo. And it was a beautiful, serene image that resembled the real Kumo Gakure in more vibrant and bright colors. And as soon as the council chamber was filled by the people and officials, and even the Kage, Rai Kage of the said village, they were all shocked. Even a tear escaped their eyes. It was the artistry, the realism in that image, the hope that was shown in that painting that stung their heart and made it love, them, love that image. As now we see, 
Naruto was paid handsomely and even was allowed to visit Kumu whenever he wanted. And even Raikage himself personally commissioned some of the paintings for, well, his house and all that. Naruto obviously did that and returned safely. Soon after that, Naruto's popularity took, popularity took another rise when other villages began to do the same. Although not the shinobi villages, but minor villages as well, like snow country, vegetable country, and so on. As this was going on, a group known as Akatsuki, or more particularly two of its members, who were famous for their so-called obsession with art, Deidara and Sasori, saw the images and paintings that Naruto has drawn. They already were aware of his existence and who he was because of their intel on the Jinchuriki's family and all those who were close to him were quite well impressed and wanted to sort out of what he thought on their art. And now we see as Naruto was returning from one of his escapades from well rice country after painting a huge painting in the walls of the said prison that resided there, the blood prison, we see he was kidnapped by the two. And once Naruto's eyes were opened, he was in an undisclosed location, in a cave. W where is this? said Naruto. Well, we brought you here, kid. So, we have a question for you. Enough, Deidara. I'm going to get to straight to the point, Naruto Uzumaki. You have a talent for art. We have seen your images and paintings that you draw and see the value they hold within them. We want your opinion on what you might see in our art. As being an artist, Naruto curiosity raised. Okay, what can you do? As Deidara began to display his explosives, Sorcerer began to display his puppetary skills. Now Naruto being the creative person he was, then stood up and said, you have a great art of well, manipulating puppets, why don't you write stories of your own that you can play out and entertain people? This way you can display your true artistic self and that can be, you know, quite financially benefit beneficial for you as well as that can help you rise in fame as well. Two things that you want, appreciation and fame, right? That is correct. Hmm, I never thought of my art in such a way. I learned these arts in the form of battle manner, but I guess you are correct. The art of puppetry, it did exist in the form of entertainment first before turning into a battle one. That is correct. Now as for you Deidara-san, your art, it's explosion right? How about making a fireworks? At first you have to you know advertise obviously, but as people begin to see the true form of your art different colors and combinations, when they explode, they will be baffled. I can already see it. Because I work with colors, maybe you too can. Huh, powdered colors and colored explosions. Huh, fireworks, huh? I guess I can do that. You think it might earn me a few bucks as well as few bucks? Heck, you might gain a lot of attention from the younger generation as well, who wants to, you know, buy them off and Explore these by themselves. Huh. Well, that is something that is quite would be interesting. That both of the artists, as they begin to talk all together, sharing their ideas and curiosity, and even the possibilities with all the techniques that shared. And in the end, one week passed by like that, spending time with one another in general. <laughs>